One in four Americans suffer from allergies. Don't let the things that contribute to your symptoms stop you from enjoying your activities. I am Dr. Rosalind Hicks, an allergist from Allergy and Asthma Center of North Carolina, a member of Cone Health Medical Group. Let's get started and talk about allergies. Allergies are the common cold. Very similar entities, they both consist of a lot of congestion, runny nose, sneezing. Typically with the common cold, you're gonna have starting out a little more scratchy throat, sore throat, and you often a little bit of fever. Both can have cough because of the postnasal drip, and you're gonna feel a little lousy with the common cold, will run down, uh, dehydrated, those kind of things. And then with allergies, it can be any time of year. Cold may be more common in the winter season, and allergies can be with exposure. Did you just mow the lawn? Did you just take care of the cat or dog? Did you just clean out the attic with lots of dust? So those are the things uh, we think about to differentiate between a common cold and allergies. The common triggers kind of fall into two categories, indoor, outdoor, seasonal, or year-round. So in the spring, we think a lot about tree pollen, we, followed by grass pollen and weed pollen. And then we have dust, mite, cockroach, mold, which can be indoors and out. And then any kind of furried animal, dog, cat, gerbil any of those. So clearly if we're sensitive to the animals, then we shouldn't have animals, we shouldn't be exposed to them, but uh, we can't really control completely pollen exposure. So if you go outside, if you're doing something involving that exposure, then wearing a mask, if you have to mow the grass, wiping off your hands and feet, taking off your shoes before you walk through the house so you don't track the pollen through, minimizing the window being down as you ride down the road, and wiping off the cats and dogs when they come in from their walk so the pollen is not throughout the house and on the furniture, those kind of things. Well, of course avoidance would be the biggest action that we could participate in to try to minimize symptoms, but side of that, uh, adding medications to minimize the congestion, sneezing, runny nose. I'm a huge proponent of saline rinse and so that's something easy that's not medicated, it's just salt water flushing out or clearing out the nasal passages so we can take away those allergens that we've been breathing in. And I think it is very important to prepare for allergy season so that you can minimize your suffering and you don't have so much congestion and headache or disrupted activity. I like to encourage people to start their medications around Valentine's Day and usually that'll minimize their symptoms and they can go into the allergy season ahead and symptom free. It is important for individuals to think about allergy testing if they're having lots of symptoms, uncontrolled symptoms, they've tried multiple medications, or they feel like there's something, one specific thing that they're really interested in knowing that they're allergic to. And especially if you have upper and lower airway symptoms, if you're coughing and wheezing, then that has become quite the standard for management to, to consider allergy injections and we need to know exactly what you're allergic to to be able to put in your specific vial so that we can manage you with the injections if we uh, have the positive testing available there. And in the situation where you may be food allergic, having allergy testing can be very informative to know what to avoid. Thank you for joining us. I hope all this information has been helpful to decrease your suffering from allergies. For more information, go to conehealth.com wellness. I'm Dr. Rosalind Hicks.